Hi there, my name is Neil Blevins, and this tutorial is called Satin Material in Blender. So many years ago, on a forum for Splutterfish, which was dedicated to the Brazil renderer, somebody asked about how to make a satin material. And so I made one, and of course the Brazil renderer is no longer around, but uh, here we are in 2025, and I'm going to show you the same basic recipe and how it would work inside a blender. So uh, the image that the uh, person on the forum gave was the one that was on the left, and then here's two other satin examples on the right. And the basic material, and this is true for any renderer out there, is uh, first of all, from a shading perspective, it's a regular diffuse and spec, nothing special. The color is whatever you want the satin to be. The specularity is a medium gloss with anisotropic reflections perpendicular to the threads of the fabric. Also, if the fabric has a very saturated color, then the spec should be tinted to match. And then finally, a bump, a very high frequency noise, which you could also replace with something like a triplanar if you want to get more detailed, but for the most part, some sort of procedural bump will probably be good enough. Okay, let's go into Blender. Okay, so here we are in Blender 4.3, and uh, we'll start off with the geometry. So this is a, a piece of cloth geometry that I made years and years ago in 3ds Max using a plugin called SimCloth. And I just um, imported the mesh inside of Blender, uh, and this will be what we use. And then this is the material assigned to it, and I'll just switch over to the interactive mode so you can see the result there. And uh, what I'll do is I'll start this kind of fresh, just so that you can see more of the process. So we'll go under shader and create a principled BSDF. Then let's just hook this into the surface on this particular object. So this is now with a regular, just sort of white material. So um, first let us copy over the color that we want. And then after that, let's bring down this roughness a bit just so we can see more of the reflectivity. And we can bring this back up later on. I just want to um, see the reflection, the specular reflection here. And then this isn't enough of that reflection, so I'm going to take the IOR and increase this. So instead of 1.5, let's put this at like, say, 4. And that increases the specularity on the surface. And this is coming from the light here, which is just a uh, light um, up above the surface. And now let's go into specular. And what we're going to do is turn the IOR level up to 1. And then we're going to start increasing the anisotropic value. And these will create stretched reflections. So if you go in here and you start increasing this, this will stretch the reflections based on the threads that are on the surface. And if you want to see more of this effect, you can take this roughness and increase it. And then you can really see the difference when you take this anisotropic and start increasing it to stretch it. And then the or rotation here is the direction that the threads go. So you can feel free to modify this to be whatever direction you want those threads to be traveling on the surface, which reflects how much um, it, um, the direction that the uh, anisotropic effect happens. So that's basically the main things. And we'll just hook it back up to the original example here. And then one last thing that was added was onto the normal, we have a bump. And the bump is just a regular noise procedural texture with uh, the roughness turned up. And then this is hooked into uh, the object of the uh, texture coordinate here. And again, this could be a much more complex one, but it, this adds just enough bump that it um, makes it feel as though you, you feel some of those threads that are on the surface. And you can't see it very well in here because this is just the, um, the, the preview one. But if you do a full render here, uh, much larger, you'll see much more of this effect going on, the uh, bump on the surface here. Again, you know, you can do a more complex one, but I think this probably works for most uh, instances you'd want to use this. And then the final thing I want to show is if you have a much more uh, deeply saturated surface, like instead of this color here, this was based on the original, um, the original example I was given by that person on the forum. But let's try doing one of those other ones, uh, the much deeper one. So let's go into the color and say go over here. Uh, so like a deeper purple sort of color. So you'll notice that here the um, reflectivity is still white, and that is because this tint is white here. So if you're going to do something more like this and you want it to be a nice deep color, what I'd recommend is then copying this down into the tint color here. And then once you've got that, if you want to see this even um, more tinted, uh, the roughness is perhaps a little bit low. So let's increase that roughness. And you can see there, now we're totally getting that effect of that other image where you have these nice deep reflections uh, going on that are spread out and are also the same color as the, the surface itself. So yeah, there you go.
So thank you very much for watching, and hopefully next time you need to make either a dress or maybe a bedspread or something like that, you can use this material inside a blender. And if you want the example file, uh, there's a direct link to it in the description, and then also you can go to neilblevins.com and go to the education section where you can get it there, um, and also see a whole bunch of other tutorials on similar subjects. And if you want to be notified the next time I post a new video like this, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. So thank you very much.